Okay, everybody. Today we are talking about some uh, products to take care of your leather goods. Shoes, boots, purses, coats, you know, whatever. Um, you know, mostly your smaller goods, not so much a couch. I mean, I suppose you could use them, but it really wouldn't uh, be super functional. This is more of your, you know, personal leather items. You know, wallets maybe, or, you know, whatever. Something like that. But mostly I'll talk in terms of boots and shoes because that's mostly what these are used for or what I use them for, for the most part. All right, first things first. Let's talk about what is here, but is always here in my videos, at least so far. It's this mouse pad. This is a um, just a mouse, a desk mouse pad. Nothing expensive. Just actually a rather cheap one off of Amazon. However, um, it served me well. the The point is, is you want to have something covering your surface. I wouldn't suggest a mouse pad. I'd suggest something um, you could buy a fancier roll-out leather piece. You can you know, get a desk blotter, something of that nature. Uh, you can sit down some newspaper, roll out a towel every time you go to work on stuff. It's fine. It, it'll all work. Um, you don't have to wash it every time. Most likely you, you, you probably aren't even going to get anything on it, but inevitably you will at some point. And you don't want to be dripping stuff on your, you know, your couch, on your rug, on your floor, on your kitchen table, on a, you know, a, a different table you're using, a coffee table, a you know, wherever you're working, even on your workbench. I mean, you wouldn't want to get, you know, black specks of uh, paste wax on there, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're working on something else, and you're like, what's all over my hands? Why, why is this all black? Well, that's why you don't want to do that. So just make sure you set something down. All right, second thing, grab yourself some paper towels or some old rags, something, just in case, because if you're working with, like, edge dressing or something of that nature, some conditioner, you're inevitably going to spill some. There'll be a drip here or there. You want to get that up as soon as possible. You don't want to be running for that. It'll probably stain whatever surface you're working on. It might even drip right through your towel. So just uh, be a little careful with things like that. Me, I like to work on my boots and shoes on a tabletop that I uh, did an old desk in, in epoxy resin. I'll make a video about that sometime, maybe. Um, that is great because you can, you know, just wipe off anything that's on there and nothing sticks to it. But that's, you know, for another time. Um, all right, get right into it cleaning off boots and shoes. Uh, first thing, just for general cleanings, when they're not, you know, too dirty, I live in a cold climate, and sometimes you'll get some salt splashes on there, and, you know, some salt water splashes from, you know, going in the snow or something. Um, basically, you know, half the year is like that around here. So, you want to have some of these, these are, this is just cut up pieces of t-shirt. The t-shirt's got old, got holes, so what I did was cut anywhere where there were seams or any other type of uh, textures and just made some squares. I keep these down in an area that's close to where we come in. I can just dampen it real quick, wring it out, give them a quick wipe down, and they're good to put some shoe trees in and be put on the boot rack. And that's great. You want to get sold off right away. You don't want to leave it. You leave it sit a long time. It'll cause some damage. You'll see some staining. You'll even see the leather start to, start to change texture, little sort of pox marks. Um, and you just don't want that. There is some salt remover out there. It generally takes the staining out. If anything, it doesn't always work. It, it does a nice job, but it's it's just not great. Um, so prevention is you know better than the cure in this case, where you just want some some cheap rags laying around. Go ahead, give them a wipe off. You know, chances are if you just you know I don't know we're walking around the, the mall you know with your significant other or, you know maybe out and about and, you know, just went and had a drink somewhere or something. Chances are your boots or shoes didn't get that dirty, but at the same time, going in and out of the car, there's definitely probably some chances for salt and road dirt and things like that. Instead of letting it grind into the leather, the next time you wear them, just give them a quick wipe off with that. You know, again, just dampen it, wring it out real good, and then wipe them off, and they'll be good to go. Um, so that's a, a nice use for those, but I'll get back to that in a little while. Now, heavier, dirtier shoes and boots, work boots, things of that nature. Now you're getting into the heavier cleaning. You, know, you can use something like a toothbrush. You know, these type brushes, which are usually used for applying polish, which I'll get to in a moment, or something like this. It's a four-inch horsehair brush. It's much like a normal shine brush you'd see. Um, similar, this is how it compares to a kiwi brush um, that you'd see in the market. It's a little smaller, um, but it's still something you can get your hands on. And you know, give them a good, a good brush off, and that's nice. Um, that'll work to, you know, keep most of your dust and dirt off and so it's not grinding into the leather and taking care of things. And 
these can be found on AliExpress for about two dollars. They're, they're not very expensive at all, um, but it's a nice natural horsehair brush, and they're, they just work really well because they're pretty small. I mean, they, you can use that for a full kit. A lot of travel kits come with a brush this size. A lot of small, cheap shoe shine kits come with a brush this size, but I found that they work great for you know oddball cleanings like that, or even a deeper cleaning when you want to really get in there and you know soap everything up with saddle soap and that. This kits in all the crevices really nice does a good job and then maybe have some extra stuck stuff or you know some threading you want to get in and then you go to the old toothbrush but for general th this works really well um now let's move on to okay say you've cleaned it off you've conditioned you know as we've talked about in another video or a little bit about conditioning some other products uh now it's time to apply things you can apply conditioner I actually use one of these to apply conditioner. Um, I find it really works it into the crevices nicely. Again, um, I use it just a different one. I just, you know, keep separate ones and I keep them marked. And it just works well to really get it in there. Again, you can use a brush like this, you know, even a brush like this. But I, I, I found this works really well and covers a lot of surface area quickly. And it, it just makes it a nice, quick job easy. So that's condition. Now after condition, maybe you want to, you know, apply a paste wash or a polish to, uh, you know, shine them up or give them that extra look or maybe uh, add some extra protection like which is most of the reason why I do it in the area we live in. Keep you protected from the elements a little, keep the, some of that water out, and things like that. Well, a lot of these are the type of brushes you'd use to apply paste wax or polish. This one, you know, it's a little older. I had used it on brown and it stained it uh, pretty well. Actually, I believe that's edge dressing that stained it as I was talking about before, some that leaked. But uh, I cleaned it off and it's a neutral brush now for uh, applying neutral paste wax. Um, this is a Kiwi brush. This is the, the brand they sell. A lot of, you know, uh, this is also their horsehair brush, which would be more of a remover brush. Um, you can find those at Walmart, at grocery stores, things like that. Um, I believe Target has like their own brand of shoe care products, but they look very similar, so I wouldn't be surprised that they're made by the same company. This is some AliExpress brushes that I brought. These aren't as great as this brush or another one I'll show you from there. Um, they lose some hairs, but they'll work. I mean, you're, you're just applying polish. It's not too bad, but it is kind of annoying to pick out the hair while they're losing the hairs. They stop eventually, but it's they, they were kind of cheap. Um, but these, again, were about $2, whereas this will run you about 4 or $5. Um, I do suggest a slightly better brush. Um, you know, not necessarily Kiwi brand, but just... You know, make sure the hairs aren't coming out of I me. Mean, it's hard to tell when you order from AliExpress, but I had good luck with other ones, so I gave them a shot, but I, I probably shouldn't have. Um, these small dauber brushes, I got this from Undandy as a uh, thank you for waiting for my boots for so long. Uh, I had ordered a custom pair of boots in custom team colors, and uh, they sent that and this brush, a polishing rag, and uh, two cans of shoe polish. Just as a thank you for waiting so long, and uh, I'd actually waited almost a year for my boots uh, when I ordered them, but that had to do with the pandemic and everything, which is understandable, so I, I didn't hold it against them. Um, I'll show you those boots in another video, and, you know, I'll, I'll mention that in my review. It's not a problem, and I, I don't hold it against them. I've even spoken to the owner multiple times, um, and he was always friendly and helpful in, you know, trying to provide information for me. So that's that. But moving on. Um... Now it's time to remove the polish. Maybe you've applied it with these brushes. I like to take one of these squares and remove a lot of the polish. Just get most of it off with that. Most people just use a brush, and that's fine. Um, I, I just like to get a, a you know the, the chunkiness off. I probably shouldn't apply so much. I'm a little heavy-handed. I grew up as a kid doing my dad's military shoes with an old Black & Decker uh, rechargeable NICAD shoe polishing kit. So, I, I, you know, learned to be a little heavy-handed with the polish, and I really got to back down because, well, quite frankly, it's just a waste, and it's costing me money. But um, but in the meantime, uh, you know, I learned to take off the bulk of it with the uh, little, you know, T-shirt squares, and that you, know, you can just throw it out, and, it's, you know, you're not worried about it. Then you can hit it with the brush, and that way you're not, you know, caking up your brush with a ton of polish. Once you do, however, as I mentioned with this brush, you can, uh, if it does get caked up, you can just wash them with some dish soap. Uh, just, you know, kind of work it in with your hands and get it uh, good and worked in and maybe do it twice with some hot, warm water. And uh, that'll, you know, clean them right up. Just leave them dry. Make sure you set it bristles down to dry so that way it doesn't, you know, leach all that water down into the handle. 
and you know come back a day later and then maybe move it to another area just so it's not sitting in the same water that it will, that from itself it should be dry enough to you know put away at that point and you know it'll be dry for the next time you use it which is just great um and it's nice because you know if you don't if maybe you have uh you know too many of one color or you no longer have something of one color you could you know swap it out that way or maybe you only have one brush and you need to you know swap colors and you're afraid of getting shoe polish color on the brush well you can go ahead and you know change them up it's not the end of the world if you get some brown on a black brush but you know if you're using uh you know something a little funky maybe a blue or something then you got that you know you're working in your your brown or maybe tan uh leather you you, you don't want to you know get that staining on there or anything and so you'd want to use separate brushes in that case and that's you know an instance you might want to clean it out so working back in these brushes um this is a four inch corsair like i said this is a corsair from uh undandy um so again just part of their little kit it's fine this is a you know kiwi um i think these are you know listed as six inch brushes um this is fine this is what you find in you know most of your supermarkets and things like that this is uh, slightly bigger, uh, about the same, eh, maybe about the same size, maybe six inches. Um, this is from AliExpress, um, just 100% horsehair shoe brush. Uh, six inches, like I said, probably uh, works great. These I recommend highly. They're uh, you know about three, four bucks on AliExpress. They work excellently, um, just as good as these Kiwi ones. If you're willing to wait to build your kit, uh, you know, highly suggest you get that kind of brush. This one will skip for now. This, uh, ones I got on uh, Amazon, I believe two for about fourteen dollars at the time, so probably about two for twenty now. Um, Raylan shoe care, uh, it's horse hair. Um, it's just a little longer, so it feels a little softer to the touch because it is longer, so they flex a little more. Also has a good curve. This is a type of brush that you'd see a lot of people who actually polish shoes, um, you know, maybe for a living or to earn money uh, use. It's a little bigger, uh, fits in the hand well. Uh, I have fairly large hands, so. Yeah, this definitely fits well, but covers a lot of surface area. Nice soft brush. I, you know, carved in black on here because, well, I have, you know, a couple pairs of black shoes and boots that, you know, this is a bigger brush I'm going to use a little more often. And so, you know, something like this, like a brown, I uh, probably should have used a, a bigger brush for brown. But uh, as an example, then I started getting these, and uh, so these sort of kind of worked for everything. But, uh, you know, maybe something like a, if you had an off color like a blue, you could just, you know, make that one of these smaller brushes or something like that. And, you know, save yourself a little money and storage space if you got too many colors and you really got into it. Some people do, some people don't. Some people just want one pair that they want to take care of and, you know, have forever. And some people, you know, like to get into it and get a lot of different uh, funky things going with different outfits and things like that. So next we have this. It's a goat hair brush. This is a finishing brush. It's rather soft. It's, um... It's a lot softer than the uh, Corsair brushes. Not that they're particularly hard, but it's uh, just a lot softer. It's uh, sort of like petting a puppy, uh, puppy fur. It's um, it's just for giving it that last little shine, the, the finishing touch, much like a buffing cloth is. Um, that's you know what it does. It just you know gives it that final touch. Um, it's even called a finishing brush. That's that's what this buffing gloss will do as well, which is just sort of a cotton brushed cotton cloth. Um, you'll see these Kiwi makes them as well. You know, other companies make them. It's just a, it's just a cotton cloth. You don't really need this, it, but it is, you know, nice to have. It's just, you know, a, a finisher, but that would be only for, you know, your things that you really want to shine up and put a, you know, tuxedo like finish on. Um, but there's a skill to doing all of that and that mirror shine anyway. So that's more of a, you know, advanced technique, but it's something to have. Um, so moving on. We have this. This is for suede and nubuck. This is to bring up the nap. It, it's, I don't know, maybe called a gum brush. It's these, I mean, sort of look like pasta. And they, uh, they're they rubbery. And, you know, they, they're a little hard, but not too hard. They're not soft and squishy per se, but they are soft and squishy a little bit. It's, I don't know, kind of contradictory. Uh, this is made by Saphir. There aren't many companies that make this. Um, Saphir makes great products, great products to use. Um, most of my brushes, you know, go ahead and buy some fear brushes. They're wonderful. I highly suggest them. They make, um, you know, a lot of different brushes like these and something along these lines. Um, they're just a little more expensive, so I, you know, try and save money where I can. It's always good to, uh, you know, buy smart when you can. And, um, 
spend a little less because sometimes you can spend less and get something you really like like you know this little brush here or, or these ones that I mentioned um, you know I didn't pay much for them at all you just got to wait a you know a month or so from to get them shipped from China via AliExpress but they you know they work great um, they always arrive undamaged and you know you just brush them up a little make sure there's no loose hairs and you know you're ready to go roll. Uh, but at the same time, you know, sometimes, you know, paying a little less for something isn't good. Like these brushes, like I said, they tend to fall out a little, but it, you know, it still works. It's not, it's not bad. It's just, you got to get those loose hairs out. Um, so anyway, this, like I said, is made, uh, for suede and nubuck. Uh, it just kind of brings that nap back up the little, you know, the little crumbly feels you feel in suede and things like that. It just sort of brings it back up and evens everything back out. It does a great job. Um, I'm reminded of a pair of a new buck shoes that I had from Dexter. They weren't made particularly well, but uh, as far as the construction, but the new buck was quite nice actually, and um, you know, had a good feel to it. And it was a you know they were solid, solid shoes as far as the uppers were concerned. And I, I wish I had that as a child because I used to uh, try and take care of those, but I was always afraid I'd ruin them. And you know I was sort of a younger teenager at the time. I'd, you know, shine my dad's shoes and things like that, but I didn't quite know how to take care of Nubuck, and uh, had I had that, I would have been able to take care of it, and so now I know, and I have it, and it's mostly for my wife's shoes, she has a few suede shoes here and there, uh, so I got that, uh, as you can see, it looks stays clean, because, you, you know, you just clean off the suede and Nubuck, and then you, you hit it with this, and it just, you know, brings it all nice and even, you hit it with a normal brush, and it can kind of mat it down, even wear it out some, it's, you know, kind of a oddity you would think this harder rubber would do it but it sort of bring, lifts it up it's almost like grabbing it as it pulls by so moving on uh, back to the rags you know again great for you know just putting on polish taking off polish maybe using you know multiple colors on a shoe or boot that you don't want to you know mix and match like i mentioned the undandy boots i had are made in red white and blue um and you know you, you you can go neutral, but if you wanted to go, you know, say red and white and blue, like in the separate spots, you know, you, you want to have some detail work, and you really can only get that by using your hands. Using, you know, a large brush like this, you're not going to get the detail. So, again, highly suggested to make use of old t-shirts. And the other thing to make use of, old socks, particularly cotton. Um, they just work great. Uh, again, it's things that, you know, you don't use... Maybe you want to apply edge dressing with it. Maybe you want to, you know, get in there to, you know, apply wax with it. Maybe you want to take off a bulk of wax with it. You really can, you know, wrap your finger around in there, you know, really get in there for that mirror shine and keep working it in as you build your layers. So, you know, make use of the products that, you know, you, you've already used and, you know, have had a good life, but you might as well give them a second one so you're not wasting. No point in spending money on something you just don't need. I mean, they, these, you know, take the place of this uh, cloth for the most part. Uh, I've been able to build a great mirror shine with a sock and a, you know, some old t-shirt pieces, no problem. You just got to have the right technique. Um, these, you know, would it look even better if I hit it with a buffing cloth after? Absolutely. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, you know, that added extra step. Um, but again, you don't have to buy all these products. You just want to buy the things you need, the things to take care of your products and make sure that they, you know, have a nice long life and service you the way that you want it to. You spent good money for your products, you might as well take care of them. All right, thanks.